All right, so in this problem, I have eight to the power of x is equal to 16. So I wanna find the value of x here. So for my solution, I'm going to start by rewriting my equation here. So my equation is eight to the power of x is equal to 16. Now, before we start doing anything, let's just inspect this problem real quick. So if I plug in x equals one into this equation, I get eight to the power of one is equal to 16, which eight to the power of one is the same thing as eight, so I get eight equals 16, which is false, right? Now if I plug in x equals two, I get eight to the power of two is equal to 16, and eight to the power of two is 64. So I get 64 equals 16. And notice how there's a big gap between eight and 64. So we know that the value of x is not gonna be a whole number but a decimal, and it's gonna be somewhere in between one and two. So x is greater than one, but less than two. We know this. Now, how are we gonna actually solve this problem and find the exact value of x? Well, what I can do is rewrite 16 as eight times two. Now what I'm gonna do is divide both sides by eight. So then these two cancel out and I get eight to the power of x over eight is equal to two. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m over a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m minus n. So a to the power of x over a to the power of one is equal to a to the power of x minus one, which is equal to two. Now, a is the same thing as two to the power of three, so I get two to the power of three to the power of x minus one is equal to two. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So two to the power of three to the power of x minus one is the same thing as two to the power of three times x minus one. And three times x minus one, I can distribute three, so I get two to the power of three x minus three is equal to two. And two is the same thing as two to the power of one. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. So this means that 3x minus 3 is equal to 1. And now if I add 3 on both sides, I get 3x is equal to 4, and x is equal to 4 over 3. Now, there actually is another way to solve this problem. What I can also do is, at the start, rewrite both of these in bases of 2. So 8 is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3, so I get 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x, and 16 is the same thing as 2 to the power of 4. Now this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3x is equal to 2 to the power of 4, meaning that 3x is equal to 4, and x is equal to 4, to 4 over 3. So this is a much simpler method of solving this problem. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna solve the equation x to the power of two minus x to the power of three is equal to 80. So to solve this equation, I'm gonna first start by subtracting 80 on both sides. So now I get x to the power of two minus x to the power of three minus 80 is equal to zero. Now from here, I'm gonna replace 80 negative 80, I should say, with negative 16 minus 64. Now, I'm going to rewrite this as, I'm going to first rewrite negative 16 as negative 4 squared, and negative 64 as negative 4 to the power of 3. And I'm going to group x squared with negative 4 squared, and x to the power of 3 
with negative 4 to the power of 3. So now there's two properties that I'm going to use. And before that, I'm going to write this as x squared minus 4 squared, and I'm going to group this minus x to the power of 3 plus 4 to the power of 3. We put this plus because this negative sign distributes. Now, if I have something in the form of a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. And if I have something in the form a to the power of 3 plus b to the power of 3, which is this, this is equal to a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. So for x squared minus 4 squared, it's going to turn into x plus 4 times x minus 4. I have this minus a to the power of 3 plus b to the power of 3, or in this case, x to the power of 3 plus 4 to the power of 3 is going to turn into x plus 4 times x squared minus 4x plus 16. Now, because both of these terms have x plus 4 in them, I can factor out x plus 4. So I get x plus 4 times x minus 4 minus x squared minus 4x plus 16 is equal to 0. Now from here, this is equal to x plus 4 times x minus 4 minus x squared plus 4x minus 16. I just distribute the negative sign is equal to 0. And let's simplify this even more. I get x plus 4 times negative x squared plus 5x minus 20 is equal to 0. So I get two equations from this. I get x plus 4 equals 0, and negative x squared plus 5x minus 20 is equal to 0. So first, for x plus 4 equals 0, all we have to do is subtract 4 on both sides, and we get x is equal to negative 4. Now, for negative x squared plus 5x minus 20 equals 0, well, first off, we have a negative sign in front of x squared, so I'm actually going to get rid of that by multiplying both sides by negative 1. So I get x squared minus 5x plus 20 is equal to 0. And now, to solve this, I'm going to use the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So in this case, a is 1, b is negative 5, and c is 20. So I get x is equal to negative of negative 5 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is negative 5 squared, which is 25 minus 4 times a, which is 1 times c, which is 20, all over 2a, so 2 times 1. And this is equal to 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 80 over 2, which is equal to 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 55 over 2. Now, this is equal to the square root of 55 times the square root of negative 1 over 2. And the square root of negative 1 is equal to the imaginary number i. So I get 5 plus or minus the square root of 55i over 2. So this is two more solutions to this equation. Thank you for watching. Please make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and share this to any of your friends and family.